I'm Shu Liu from the Chinese, Liu, Chinese University of Hong Kong. I'm going to introduce our method to tackle simultaneous detection and sanitation task. This is a joint work with Xiao Juanqi, Jian Ping Shi, Hong Zhang, and Jia Jia. In keyword statistics for this CVPR, object detection and semantic sanitation are taken as important tasks and involve a lot of research. Object detection focuses on generating bounding boxes for each instance. This representation could be insufficient. In this example, the man and the entire bottle are included in one box. For semantic sanitation, it is to predict a more detailed mask in the pixel level. It, however, ignores the existence of a single object instance. In this example, both persons are denoted by one connected area. Simultaneous detection and sanitation, also known as instance-aware semantic sanitation, is a relatively new direction to generate pixel-level masks for each object instance. And here, the two persons are separated. SDS is a relatively new task, and it was it was described in year 2014 by Harold Herring and Silverman. Following it, several methods were introduced in this field to tackle it. The general framework of SDS on natural image is to classify object proposals. The first step is commonly to generate segment-based object proposals. Together with the input image, they are fed to convolutional neural networks for classification. This is an effective process and thus was adopted in most of the previous work. In our work, we show another direction to tackle this problem without object proposals. Our solution is to model objects by a set of predefined patches. Each patch corresponds to part of an object, which is, e which is easy to achieve. For each patch, we predict the class label and the mask in a unified network. In the final step, Masks of those patches are aggregated together to infer the entire object. Along this direction, no proposal generation is required. Our system is similar to the object building procedure. Given a set of necessary blocks, we can assemble them into different cars. It is also possible to construct another racing car with six wheels with similar building blocks. Images could be similarly decomposed and recomposed as discussed extensively in previous part-based and patch-based models. Here, we extract a set of patches. We then apply learning to classify and segment each patch. Finally, resulting masks are aggregated together to form the complete object. This process naturally bypasses proposal generation. Now I describe the details of our network. The input image first goes through convolutional layers to generate the global feature map. Model scale patch generator operates on the global feature map to crop feature grids for different patches. The following segmentation and classification branches operate on the cropped feature grids. In segmentation branch, we follow the deep mask to utilize fully connected layers to connect feature grids and masks. In classification branch, we follow the standard design to utilize three fully connected layers. Using patches instead of proposals faces two main challenges in our work. First, it is important to unify multi-scale patches in order to make the network training efficient and effective. Second, without proposals, how to assign labels to patches during training is not that straightforward. The following slides explain our solutions. The first contribution is to design a multi-scale patch generator. We select windows on the global feature map to crop feature grids for each patch. Since we have different scales of patches, feature grids are also with different sizes. In order to make prediction, one intuitive process is to train different subnetworks for different scales respectively. But this design is not optimal due to the huge model and the training data split into four parts. This intuitive structure does not perform well in our experiments. We adopt a scale alignment module to align feature grids to the same size. For small patches, we use deconvolution layers to upsample the feature grids. For large ones, we use max pooling to downsample them. With this simple operation, only one classification branch and one segmentation branch are sufficient to process all patches. Our second contribution is on selecting samples for patch training. In traditional proposal-based methods, 
LEO values between proposals and ground truths are used. Large LEOs give positive samples, and others yield negative ones. This strategy is, however, not appropriate in our patch-based framework. Since our patches are not complete objects, we need to make necessary modification. We design three constraints to select positive samples. Similar to DeepMask, the first constraint is to make the center of a patch locate on an object. With this condition, the green bunny box is a positive sample containing part of the person. This box is a negative sample. The second constraint requires at least half of an instance is inside a positive sample. Here, the green and red bound boxes are positive and negative samples, respectively. The last constraint requires the object region occupies at least one-fifth of the patch. Obviously, this patch is a weight one, and the red bound box is already loose. In short, only if all the three conditions are satisfied, the patch is regarded as positive in our method. In the duration of training, we combine the loss of classification and cementation branches. Different from fast RSN, which has four steps to train a two-branch network, we train the two branches simultaneously. Now we perform an analysis of our patch-based method. The first term is about the suitability of selected positive patches. Empirically, we crop patches based on ground truth. Then we select positive patches and compose them to, fa to form final object instance. If objects can be correctly reconstructed, that means our selected patches are enough for final object construction. In our experiments, the recall with four skills is higher than 90%. It thus shows our patch system and skill number are sufficient in theory to represent object instances. We also evaluate the performance of our network in terms of classifying and segmenting patches. We achieve 84.5% accuracy on classification, and a mean value of 0.79 in terms of segmenting masks. The statistics verify that our patch-based system is reasonable. Here is an example. Our method may misclassify patches as background when the box center is an object boundary. But the neighboring patches yield correct predictions. Two more correct predictions are shown here. Eventually, this type of error does not affect our final result, since we will have an addition aggregation step to eliminate those erroneous patches and form object instance. Our patch aggregation algorithm is easy. We collect patches along scan lines. Here comes the set of patches with path body segmentation and the labeling information regarding different instances. We then select patch pairs with the maximum LU value and put them together. This is an iterative process until the overlap score of remaining patch pairs are lower than the threshold. This simple process can make use of predictions from different patches and relieve some errors. We calculate the LU value of patch pairs that need to be aggregated according to ground truths. Distribution of LU values is shown here. Around 88% are with LU higher than 0.7, which means patches capture enough object segment information and the inference can be, can be achieved. We conduct experiments on three datasets. The RVLC 2012 segmentation, SBD, and Microsoft Cocoa, respectively. We compare with PFN that produced the state of the results of VLC 2012 segmentation validation subset. PFN is also a proposal free method, or patch based method with one skill and three skill input performed statistically. We also compare with previous work on SBD dataset. Our method with one skill input performs comparable with the hyper column without risk or step. With three skills and risk score, our method performs better than previous work. We note, averagely, we only report 15 objects on each image before the LMS step, which is much less than proposal-based method. We finally evaluate our method on Microsoft Cocoa dataset. We train our network on train and validation subset and report our results on test standard and test developed subsets, respectively. On this dataset, we compare with the contemporary work MNC16, which uses the VGG16 structure without network ensemble. All three skill augmentation reaches good performance. We note the bottom two methods are contemporary work, that with model ensemble or new network structure, which largely increases performance. Compared with previous proposal-based system, our patch-based method is not heavy in computation, 
it is faster than several methods since there is no proposal generation. Here are some examples from SPB processed by our system. The result quality is reasonable. We can even segment out such a small portion in low contrast. To conclude this talk, we designed a proposal-free system for SDS, addressing a few fundamental issues when using patches for instance-aware semantic segmentation. At the initial attempt, we believe there must be a lot of room for improvement along this direction. In next talk, our MSRA colleagues will describe their powerful proposal-based framework for solving almost the same problem. It is great to see the difference in models. This also tells why students like us have to always work hard since state-of-the-art state methods change so quickly in today's research. That's all about my talk. Thank you.